Um, so CCNA Core Concepts Chapter 7, Foundation Cisco IOS Operations. Um, you know, I, I said before that, you know, the first, you know, four or five chapters is really a lot of memorization, and now we're, we're into the fundamentals of actually using that, and this is just a continuation of, of that. Um, and it actually touches on a lot of things we, we just talked about, kind of like, you know, the post and what, what those things that are going on in memory are. Um, so first we'll talk about terminal options, uh, you know, your options for actually getting into a Cisco router and accessing it. Um, standard method for accessing it is the console port, especially if they're, uh, it's an initial, you know, no configuration or anything like that. Um, you guys probably already saw this hooked up or whatever, this blue console cable. You got a, a port right there on the back labeled console, and that's, that's where you're going into. Um, the console cables, the rollover come out, come as either an RJ45 to RJ45 or RJ45 to DB9. And as we were talking about earlier on my laptop, um, I, I don't know that Cisco is going to make any change to that, but like a lot of new laptops, you don't have a, um, a DB9 port or serial port available, so you have to get one of these um, one of these things I had to borrow from supply chain to um, convert the serial over to USB, download the drivers for it, that kind of thing. Um, the console port, unless like someone has a configuration on there that's that's um, you know, changing the the speed of it or something, should be open and usually the default is going to be 9600 uh, for the speed. The auxiliary port, uh, the AUX port, is generally generally used for out of band modem connections. Uh, it's similar to the console port, but has uh, flow control capability. Not all Cisco routers have that auxiliary port. In fact, this this one that we've got right here doesn't. Um, if, if it does have an aux port, it's going to be usually right next to the console port and labeled AUX, uh, so that you don't you know, confuse the two of them. Um, out of box port? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, out, out of band. Okay. Um, and then Telnet, if it's configured properly, uh, usually for remote access on port 23, uh, it requires a significant, maybe not the right word, but it does require some decent configuration on the router for it to work. You gotta have an IP set up on there, you have to have the, the VTY session set open. If you don't set up the login credentials for VTY, you will see the infamous password required but none set. I want. I wish everyone was in the knock right now so I could yell that so everyone heard that. If you ever see password required but none set, it is because the VTY is not configured on the router. Um, this comes up a lot on uh, a couple of customers where we have to remove the the last few lines of the config if someone's going in via console. So like if you're if you're in via console and you try to change the console speed while you're connected at 9600 to something else, it will kick you out of the box. And so on some of the configs we do, we we remove that uh, part, the last few lines where it's got the you know line con zero, VTY, everything. We remove all of that so that the technician on site using a console cable won't get booted from the box before the, the configuration is all the way in and so we can save it. Um, so if you ever have this happen where you've just had a, a, a tech add a, a configuration and he, <coughs> you know, you're trying to get in to add that last part, he has to add the line VTY and usually it's going to be line VTY 0 through 4 and then, uh, you know, login local or some kind of login so that the, the uh, virtual terminal is actually set up. The reason they do that is if you if you aren't uh, careful with what you're doing and you you set up a router that's got access to your internal network but you neglect to do anything with the VTY ports, if they didn't require a password, any hacker or anybody else could just tell them that right into your network and basically do whatever they wanted to it. So that's the that's the reason they have that set as a safeguard. But just remember, if you ever see password required but none set, you need to set your VTY. Um, and then SSH is uh, almost the same as Telnet. We talked about this in, in previous classes. Um, remote access, usually through port 22. Uh, you can change that, but 22 is a standard port. Um, it, it also requires some significant configuration on the router to get it work. It's got to be set up basically to the point of Telnet with a couple of additional things, uh, setting up the RSA key. Um, it's more secure than Telnet because the data is encrypted. So if someone were to sit in the middle of uh, of your session, you know, for telling that it'd be plain text. For SSH, it's going to be encrypted, so they wouldn't be able to just easily, um, you know, decrypt everything that you're doing. And then the the fifth method for accessing a router um, is going to be HTTP, HTTPS. Um, you know, just opening up a web port basically 
port 80 corresponding to HTTP and 443 to HTTPS. Um, this also requires some significant configuration on the router to get it to work. And then uh, I got another little, that's actually right from the book, you guys have that. Um, a little table showing like, you know, each of the, the various connection methods, um, you know, in-band versus out-of-band, what, what type of cable you need, whether you need IP connectivity. Um, so that's, that is in the book, table 7.1, if you want to take a look at that and go over the individuals. But we pretty much covered the, the broad strokes on all that stuff. Okay, so the, the router switch startup procedures, um, I'm going to go into each one of these. Oh, that is really misspelled password. That is really misspelled. Uh, Word. <laughs> that's going to have to be changed. Um, that's so th th I'm, I'm going to go into each one of these individually later, but just a quick listing. You've got your post, powered on self-test, your bootstrap, ROM on, iOS loading, <coughs> configuration loading, setup mode, and password recovery. Okay, so POST is the power on self-test. Um, as soon as the router powers on, it, it's got a specialized piece of ROM that uh, tests the physical hardware. So like it, you know, make sure that the flash works, make sure the CPU is working, goes through each of the interfaces, make sure they seem to be working properly. If any of those tests fail, there are a few possibilities. Um, you know, it, it starts at the router will not power on at all. Like especially like if, you know, CPU for instance, something like that, it fails in POST. Uh, you're probably not going to get any power to the router at all. Uh, the, it also ranges to you'll get a power on, but you know some interfaces won't be won't be working. So usually, if post goes through and you know flash CPU those work, but maybe one of the interfaces don't work, uh, the the router will actually boot up, but that particular interface obviously will not function because it, it failed during post. Um, okay. So once post completes successfully, another ROM initiates for bootstrap. Um, if bootstrap fails for any reason, the router will likely come up in ROM on mode. Um, what bootstrap does is tries to locate where the iOS is at. It does that by looking for what's called the configuration register for the router. Um, so right below, you see you got these values for your configuration register. If it's set to zero by 2100, and these are going to be hex values, so you see down here it's you know, you're going into F, that kind of thing. Zero by 2100, it's going to boot into ROM mon um, immediately. Uh, if it's got a value of zero by 2101 through 210F, it's going to be uh, boot normally. 2102 is actually the default. Um, the if you go to Cisco's website and look up um, Bootstrap or look up the ROMON process or changing your configuration register, they'll have a full listing of each of these. It, it has very slight differences in the way that it boots up, but it'll eventually get to your you know, get to where your iOS is loaded and everything anyway. So, uh, if you're always remember, twenty one oh two is what you want to set it to if you're if you're in doubt. Um, ROMMON, which we talked about a second ago, uh, ROM monitor is a very basic limited OS in the router. Um, it most commonly occurs when the configuration register is not pointing to the correct location of the iOS.bin file. Um, there is no valid iOS saved on the router and the router cannot locate an iOS via TFTP. So in other words, like even if you've got a the configuration register correctly set to say, hey, the iOS is located here, um, go, to, go to this with the, the 2102. If there's no iOS there, um, what it will try to do is see if it can locate an iOS via TFTP. If it also cannot download an iOS via TFTP, at that point it will go to ROM uh, And then uh, the iOS saved on the router is corrupted and the router cannot locate an iOS via TFTP. So same thing like you know with uh, an iOS not being there if they if it tries to load the iOS but it's not working and it can't find another one via TFTP it'll boot into ROM on. Um, 